So what are we going to talk about in this course? Well, we are going to cover a lot of materials. First is the welcome section, which we are in right now. Then we'll talk about the definition of a software architect. As we will see, there are several types of architect. We will describe some of them and then focus on the types that really interest us, the software architect. Then we will discuss what is perhaps the biggest change a software architect should do in order to bring the maximum benefit to the organization, adapt a business mindset instead of a technological one. We will talk about the meaning of this mindset and why it's so important for the architect. The fourth section in this course outlines the architectural process. What are the actual steps the architect should take in order to build a robust yet practical architecture for the system she is working on? The next sections deep dive into this process and detail the specific of each step. The working with system requirements section talks about the importance of fully understanding the system requirements and introduces us to the concept of non-functional requirements. After we have discussed the requirements, we will turn our attention to the application itself. The first thing an architect should do is define the type of the application, and in this section we will explore the various types of mainstream application types and what are the main attributes of each type. After we have decided on the application type, it's time to select the technology stack. In this section we will discuss the various considerations for selecting technology stack and explore various implementation options for front-end, back-end and data store. Having selected the technology stack, it's time to start talking about the architecture. But wait! Before discussing architecture, we need to meet a set of capabilities that will help us design an architecture that fulfills the non-functional requirements. And in order to fully understand the non-functional requirements, we will meet the STAU elites. No, they are not a family of weirdos, but a set of non-functional requirements every architect should know about and make sure her architecture is well suited for them. And now it's time to start looking at the components of the applications. Components are the building blocks of almost every application, and they must be designed correctly in order to ensure the application is fast, efficient, and easy to maintain. In this section, we will deep dive into the attributes of a well-designed component. Note this is going to be a little bit low level, but it's a must for every architect to be able to look at a code without fainting. The next section is an introduction to design patterns. You probably heard of design patterns already, but even if not, don't worry. We will discuss the idea behind the design patterns and delve into some of them. Having talked about the micro level of the system, it's time to take a step back and look at the macro level, as the system as a whole. In order for a system to be reliable, fast, secure and easy to maintain, it's important to take into consideration various attributes of a well-designed system. We will discuss those attributes and understand how they affect the architecture. Every seasoned architect knows that architectural decisions are rarely made on a pure technical basis. There are always other considerations and constraints that must be taken into account. In the next section, we will explore the most common constraints and see how they might affect the architecture. And then, drum rolls please, we arrived at what is perhaps the most important section in this course, the architecture document. This document is a culmination of the architecture process. It is the product of the requirements, technology stack, components architecture, systems architecture, external considerations, coffee saturated meetings and long silent writing session. The document describes the architecture designed for the system and contains everything the developers and team leaders need to know in order to start developing the system. In this section, we will go through the document's goal, audience and structure and discuss the content of each section in the document. After we have talked about the document, it's time to put everything we talked about to test. In the case study section, we will discuss a system we need to design for a fictional IoT company. We will go together through all the steps we talked about, understand the requirements, decide on the technology stack, map and design the various components, and talk about the architecture document structure. At the end of this section, you will find a very special bonus. An architecture document, complete with all the sections discussed in this course, ready for you to download and use. You can use it as a template for your future documents or as a reference for your own document. But anyway, it's yours to use. Enjoy it! The software architecture is a moving, vibrant world, and there are always new trends and advances. 
The next section explores some advanced architectural concepts such as microservices, CQRS, and event sourcing. Don't worry if you don't know what these mean, I'll explain it all. And the last but not the least of this course section deals with soft skills. A good architect must practice her soft skills. You need to know how to speak to people, how to listen, what to do with criticism, and you will get a lot of this, how to deal with organizational politics and more. The soft skills section deals with those topics and I encourage you to pay close attention to it. This might be exactly what will make you a great architect. And after all this, we will conclude and reflect on what we have learned together. So, brace yourself for the fascinating world of software architecture and let's go!